brother. You've been hearing this phrase for so many times, again and again and again. You've heard it from sermons, from podcasts. You've heard or you've seen this phrase from Facebook, from Instagram, from Twitter. You've heard this. You know this. And even from this sermon series that we have so far with John 90 Pistols, you've heard it so many times about the love, but we cannot deny that the theme of these two chapters that we've been uh, studying so far since the other two weeks, the last two weeks, it's about love. The theme of the Johannine piece is about live life, light, and love. And I hope that you won't get sick and tired of hearing about love. Because our vision is to be a loving church, expressing life to disciple people for the glory of God. And that's what we would like to be. And that's what we would like to happen to our church. To every individual, to every people, to every person in this room, we would like you to be a loving person, a loving dad, a loving mom, a loving daughter, a loving son, a loving friend, a loving worker, a loving minister, a loving leader, or what have you. We want, because you know what? If you would like to excel in something, what God would like us where God would like us to excel would be in the area of loving God and loving people. If you excel in those things, you can obey the Ten Commandments. If you love God, you would worship God. You would go to church. You would pray. And if you truly love God, then you would love people. And if you love people, you won't, then, you won't disadvantage Him. You won't cheat him. You won't deceive him. But you would care for him. He would look for their own interests and not your interest. But yes, let's go. That's not my. Okay, let's go straight away. Love one another. Tell the person next to you, let's love one another. Come on. If you're trying to court this girl or boy, don't say it to her or him. <laughs> let's love one another. That's, that's awkward. <laughs> As brothers and sisters in Christ, come on, tell this person with conviction, let us love one another. I hope that you won't be, I hope that you won't feel discomfort hearing this message. But yes, I want you to feel, to feel uncomfortable or discomfort. Because it means to say that you're really listening to the word of God and God is speaking to you. Because I know it's hard to really love one another, right? Let's do this. There you go. We are allowed to love one another. Last year, we are blessed to blessed. You know what? Actually, we are love to love. Let's start from verse 7 that says, Dear friends. Another translation. It says, the beloved children, let us love one another. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whatever does not love, whatever does, not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us, we also ought to love one another. Dear friends, let us love one another. We are not commanded to love in order for us to be worthy of God's love, to earn the love of God. No. Love is from God. 
And we are loved by God. In order for us to reciprocate that love. Actually, it doesn't say here that you should love God back. But how you would reciprocate the love of God, you ought to love one another. If you would like to reciprocate the love of God, then you ought to love one another. It is not about loving God that would really make us a good Christian. Actually, it is about loving one another because loving one another or loving God would automatically people would love God automatically if we love one another if we love God so if we confess if we profess if we declare that we are born of God that we are from God therefore we are born with the, of, the, of the spirit with love with the capacity to love and love others Everyone who, lo who loves has been born of God and knows God. The word knows here, not just merely hearing or knowing God, but actually experience God in a very special way that it brings transformation in into your life. And something change happened in your life. That's the reason why you learn to love God and love others. Many people know God, they learn about God, but they didn't really experience God. But we really need to experience God in our lives when we hear, when we listen to the word of God. If that happens, if you learn Jesus and you experience Jesus, that will bring transformations to our, transformation to our lives. And that would help us to love him and love others others and you know me i am not the kind of pastor who would dilute the word of god i will say what the word of god tells me and i would tell it to you even it would displease you as long as i please my god i don't i don't care whom i would displease listen to this church if you please god it doesn't matter who you displease if you displease God, it doesn't matter who you pleased. The word of God can bring discomfort to people. The word of God can, be, can, bring, can bring some, uh, it can offend people. I don't care. If people will be offended by the word of God, because many people were offended when Jesus Christ was teaching the word of God. This is quite a strong word from the Apostle John. Because we don't want to take the word of God lightly. We want the word of God, the very word of God, not diluting it, not making it pleasing to people in order for them to come back. But what I would like you to hear today is a message of this aging apostle who didn't have time to make the word uh, make the word what do you call that? I'm running out of words <laughs> to make the word easily to be accepted by the world the world Because God is love. Love is from God. We received something when we became born again. We didn't just receive salvation. Or you didn't just receive forgiveness. But you receive the spirit with love that enables you to love and love others. Okay? John categorically wrote here that whoever 
does not love does not know God. If you don't love others, if you don't love one another, therefore, we don't know God. If you really know God experientially, you've experienced God, and it transforms your life, then you would know how to love others because love comes from God. God loved us in order for us to love others, love from Him. This is love. He actually showed it to us, expressed it to us. How? By sending his son. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That's a big word, Pastor June. Atonement. Or maybe we could use another word, which is propitiation, which is more bigger. Which is bigger. So let me explain to you what is atonement. Atonement, is simply means, it simply means to pay the wrongdoings. That's it. No, you know what? You can actually pay for all your sins. Maybe it's a new thing for you. Yes, you can pay for all your sins. You know how? By being punished and being placed in hell for eternity. And that way, you can pay for your own sins. But Jesus paid for you. When it says here, God sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice. He paid instead of you being crucified on the cross, instead of us paying for our own sins, placed in hell for eternity. No, Jesus gave himself because he loved us, because the Father loved us, because the Son loved us. He gave his life for us. For our sins, take note, church, not for your own good, not for your own, because you're obedient, because you are good, because you are a generous person. That's why Jesus atoned his life for you. No, no, no. He gave his life as atoning sacrifice for your sins, not because you're good. Not because you're obedient, not because you're generous, not because I'm a preacher, not because I'm a pastor, not because I give my tithe, my offering, not because I lead people, not because I evangelize, not because of these good things that I am doing. God died for me because of my failures, because of my sins. Dear friends, God's love, God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. If we want to love one another, which I know it's very difficult to do, but as long as you are seeking God, as long as you are drawing close to God, then there is a big possibility that the person or the church member or the friend or a life group member or the office mate or this person that you would like, whom you, love, who, whom you would like to love, would also be closer to you if both of you would be drawing closer to God. Imagine, just take, for example, a husband and wife, the best uh, uh, example that we could use. Imagine this one is uh, Joseph, uh, Joe, and other is Maggie. As long as they are going toward God, and Maggie also going towards God, look at their position. They're getting closer to God, and they're also getting closer to one another. So if we would like to grow our love to one another, let us all seek God, grow to God, go to God, 
let's come to God closer and we we'll all grow together in love. So young people, if you would like your boyfriend or girlfriend, if you would like to grow in love with one another, what you would do is grow together with God because it says here, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son in verse 9 says that we may live through him. We are going to love one another through him. We are going to serve God through him. We are going to care for people through him. We are going to work together through him. It's through him, through him. The very reason why God sent his son is for us to live through him. Wow. When we live through him, when your husband lived through Jesus, when, you live, when your wife lived through Jesus, then what a wonderful relationship you've got. Then you are growing in love in one another. Church, simple point. We are love to love one another. You are loved by God. And you have to reciprocate that. By loving one another. I am loved by God. Why? To keep it for myself? No. For me to love you. To love you. To love you. To love each and every one of this, to love each and every person in this room. Next point would be, we, the next point is, loving one another is a mark of true fellowship. Are you still there, church? I know it's quite heavy, but... Is there? This is a sermon series. I cannot skip this particular verse. We need to go through all the verses in 1st John, 2nd John, and 3rd John. No one has ever seen God. Have you seen God? No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us. And, he, and His love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in Him and He in us. He has given us of His Spirit. We, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent His Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. What a word. And so we know and rely on the love God of the love God has for us. God is love. We all know that. Not, don't believe in the word that says love is God. No. Our dictionary can't define God. It means to say, if we are going to say love is God, it means to say the definition of love is God. No. It's only God is love. Because God defines love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. Why would John write this thing? If we love one another, it was highlighted there. Can you see that? If we love one another, God lives in us. Why won't John just simply say, if we love God, then God lives in us? That's easier to understand. If we love God, God lives in us. If you're going to really read this first verse, verse 12, that says, no one has ever seen God. If John would say, no one has ever seen God, but if we love God, who can prove that you really love God? Who can see that you really love God? Can anyone really tell that you really love God? What if you fake it? What if you make it up? That's so why, since no one can ever see, since no one can see God, this is what John said. If we love one another, God lives in us. Because if God lives in us, in this church, in you, it's would, it would automatically mean that we love one another. 
it is impossible for us to have God in us truly that and then we hate one another. It is impossible. We cannot walk in darkness and in light. It is here that says that God lives in us. It's, it would automatically mean that you love your brother, your sisters. I know it is hard. It's impossible. Yeah, I know. I got you. We are in the same boat. We all have difficulty in loving all people. But you have the spirit in you. God will not give us something. God will not ask us of, us, 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 us of something that we would, he would not help us to do. And his love is made complete in us. Wow. Loving one another can complete the love of God for humanity. The goal of God is to love people and to love all humanity. And that won't be complete unless we love one another. Because it says that because God so loved you, you ought to love one another. It won't stop there in just loving you. You have to love one another in order for us to complete the love of God among us. Do you, do you get the point, church? This is what the word is telling us right now. Simply love. Love one another. How many times the word mentioned in this, how many verses from verse 7 to 21? It's actually around 27 times the love have been mentioned in this verses. So this is how we know that we live in him. He in us. We need to say we fellowship with God. If we fellowship with God, it means we are fellowshipping with one another. We love one another. We care for one another. We serve one another. He has given us up His Spirit. It's because of the Spirit of God. That's why we can love even the unlovable. God won't tell us something that he, we can't really, or ask something that we can't really do. God would only command things that is really possible with his power. And all things are possible with God. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to, the Savior, to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them. You have, the right, you have to have the right theology. You, have, you, have, you should have the right definition of God, of Jesus, in order for you to really know what love is, and that is the God lives in them and they in God. We have this fellowship. Remember this precious fellowship, the fellowship with God, with us, us with God, and it manifests in our life group. When we have a good fellowship with God, it would manifest inside your life group. I'm not saying your life group would be perfect. I'm not saying this church would be perfect. There's no such thing as perfect life group or perfect church. If you can find one, get out of that life group. Get out of the church because that church would no longer be perfect. What I'm telling you, church, is if we have all had this right relationship with God, with the Son, with the Spirit, our fellowship with people would also be right. That's why loving one another is a marker of a true fellowship, a true church, a true group. Yes, that's right. Loving one another. Amen. God created a group, a fellowship, a church. That is, who's, that is identified by what? By praise and worship? Hmm. By evangelism? By prayer? No. God created a group, a fellowship during his time. Identified by what? By love. For the first and only time in history, Jesus created a group whose identification 
or identify, identifying factor is love. Skin color won't be the issue. Your native language doesn't matter here. Your personal background doesn't matter here because we are all identified together not by our alma mater, not by our, our profession, not by our ethnicity, but with our love for God. And they would know and they would see that you are true disciple of Christ if you love one another. It's not by miracle. It's not by healing. It's not how many people would, would come to your church. It's not how many people say yes to God. It's not how many people would be baptized. It's how many people would love one another. That would matter most. <laughs> Loving one another. So third point. Marco, come up here. We're finishing this. Loving one another completes God's love among us. This is in reference to the previous verses. It says here that loving one another completes the love of God among us. This is how love is made complete among us. Again, this is in reference to the preceding verses. That we completed God's love by loving one another. So that we'll have confidence in the day of judgment. Are you confident in the day of judgment? When, when you hear the word or the phrase that says, the day of judgment, it is the coming of Christ, it is the end times. Are you confident? But if you love one another, we have completed the very goal of Jesus in loving people and us loving one another. We have completed the love of God, the purpose and if you do that, it means to say you obey God. And it means that we are all doing the right thing. And now we are confident for the coming of Christ. We are not afraid to face Jesus because we have followed His command to love one another. In this world, we are like Jesus. Wow, we are like Jesus. The way He cares, the way He loves, the way He ministers. Because love is the key in everything. There is no fear in love. If you have completed the love of God by loving one another, then there would be no, there would be no fear in you. No fear of judgment. For there's no condemnation in those in Christ Jesus. There would be no fear in you. But if you have fear right now, maybe there's incompleteness inside of you. There's a vacuum inside of you. Perhaps the love of God is not complete in you. Maybe you're holding something. You need to let go. You need to do something in order for that love to be perfect in you. Maybe the key is start loving one another. Forgive one another. Accepting one another. Understanding one another. Because fear has to do with punishment. We're afraid to be punished. If, you do, if you're doing the right thing, you are not afraid because you know that you won't be punished. You won't be judged. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. If you really know the love of God in your life who sent His Son, Jesus Christ, for all of us, why would you be afraid? Why would you be afraid of with anything else? You know that God, if God can do something like that, sending His Son to die on the cross, why would you be afraid? of losing your job or losing a friend why would you be afraid why would you be afraid of dying if you know the true love of God there's no fear in love Lord I want that kind of courage I want Lord that kind of love that this apostle John is saying that in perfect love, there is no fear. Yes, first and foremost, the very reason why you don't need to fear because you're doing the right thing. You are completing the Word of God, the love of God by loving one another. And the fear that you have, the love will drive all those things. 
Oh, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Very straightforward, right? Very striking. It hits me. I hope it hits you as well. If not, let's go back to the first point. No, we won't be doing that. But this is the last point. Simply. The conclusion. Church, let's love one another. We love because He first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates brother or sisters is a liar. Again, I will not dilute the Word of God. I will tell what the Word of God is saying to me today. And I hope that you would accept what the Word of God is saying to you right now. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love whom they have not seen. You're a liar, my friend. You're a liar, June, if you don't love this person. And He has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brothers. How we would love others. Jesus taught us how to love others. How did Jesus love you? That's how you would love others. Let's love one another. Let's put this into practical action. Pastor John, it's so hard, it's difficult, it is impossible to love this person. I am on the right side. I don't think, Pastor June, I could reconcile, I would reconcile to this person. Has anybody offended you? That's a question, that's not a rhetorical question. You can answer it, but don't answer it loud. Answer it in your heart. Has anybody offended you? This is my This is what I would like to say to you if someone has offended you. As a pastor and not a counselor, because counselor and pastor they work differently. Pastor says what is necessary to do. Has anyone offended you? If you're offended by God, by, by, by a person, seek reconciliation. Seek reconciliation. If you are a true born again believer, you have to seek reconciliation. Oh, Pastor June, I was the one offended. He offended me. She offended me. Why would I seek reconciliation? Jesus did. We offended Jesus. We offended God. We are not the offended party. Jesus, God is the offended party. But who sought us? Who took the first, who took the initiative? Who, who sought real reconciliation? Jesus, He gave Himself to us. Pastor John, I'm insulted. He insulted me. She insulted me. This is impossible. We insulted Jesus. We insulted God. When we disobeyed God, when we put Him under the shelf, we insulted God. When we, we dishonor God, we, dis we, we insult Him. And yet, He loved us. Pastor June, He's not worthy. This person doesn't really deserve to be forgiven. He doesn't, he's not worthy to be loved because of his actions, because of his attitudes, because of his background, because of his past, because of his personalities, because of his sins. He is not worthy, Pastor June. And so are you. You are not worthy. 
I am not worthy in the eyes of God. And yet, He sent His Son for me and died for me. And the Bible says, love one another as I have loved you. How would you love people? The way Jesus loved you. You insulted Jesus. You were rebellious. You were disobedient. You hurt people. You hurt even yourself. And yet God reconciled with you through His Son, Jesus. If we think people around us is not worthy to receive the love, the forgiveness of God, and so are we in the eyes of God. I know this is hard, this is tough. But we don't want to play games with God. This is the reality. This is the Word of God. No one has ever seen God. We have heard that from our second point. Who have seen God here? No one. No one. No one. No one ever seen God. But do you know how we can see God? Do you know how people would see God? First, God sent His Son in order for us to see God. We were able to see God, not us, but during His generation, he, they were able to see God through the life of Christ, through Jesus Christ, who's, who was in flesh during the first century. They see God literally, physically, they saw God. And now that Jesus is no longer here, how would they see God? How they would see Jesus? Do you know how? If we love one another, they would see Jesus. If we care for one another, they would see Jesus. If we serve one another, they would see Jesus. The loving one another is the true marker of a true Christian. If we are a true church, if we are a true fellowship, we have to love one another. Not by talk, but by walk. Not by just word, but by actions. No, come on church. This is the word of God. This is the word of God in season. This word is not for your friends, not for your mom, not for your dad. This is for you. Come on. Let us love one another. I'll give you 10 seconds to look at the place. Is there any person in this room that I hate? That as I'm so annoyed. Come on. Oh, don't look at them. Just think of that person who's a member of this church. That you are so annoyed. That you are so angry. That you cannot, that you're literally getting into your skin. I'll give you 10 seconds. So think about this person. It's about time to love him, to love her, in order for you to grow as a Christian. Or maybe you need one minute or 10 minutes. And now I'll give you the opportunity to think of those people who are not here in this room. Love one another. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for hurting me today through your word. The truth hurts, really. But it will bring freedom. It will set us free. I want to love you, God, by loving 
my brothers and sisters. Help us, Lord, to find reconciliation, to seek reconciliation from people whom we offended or who offended us. We want to live a life with freedom. We don't want to live life in chains. We refuse to live a life that is controlled by the enemy. Holy Spirit, have your way today. Have your way today, Lord. God, we envision ourselves, our church, as a loving church. Lord, we didn't realize us something. Our comfort, our time, even our family in order for us to fulfill this vision. Because loving means giving up of ourselves, surrendering everything to you, believing that you are working behind Jesus move in the hearts of your people whatever I've missed I know you are enough more than enough you could suffice things to God everything that I've missed Lord I pray Lord whisper it in their ears speak it into their hearts Jesus thank you. Hallelujah. The first thing we need to do before we could proceed to loving one another. If there's anyone here in this room who doesn't have any right relationship with Christ or personal relationship with Christ, this is your opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus, to give all to Jesus. To make him as your Lord and Savior. If that's you, make this decision. The most important decision that you could ever that you could ever make in your life is to give all to Jesus. Surrender your life to Jesus. If you're watching us right now through our live stream, yes, God is speaking to you. Surrender to Jesus, right? All the things that you need to surrender. Admit that you are a sinner. Admit that you failed. Admit that you need him. If that's you if you're here today let's all let's close out all our eyes and let's make this opportunity let's give this opportunity to some people who would like to really surrender to Jesus in order for them to receive and accept and the love of God and that they may be able to love others as well if that's you while everyone is bowing down and they're all focused in Christ if you would like to surrender your life to Jesus, raise your hand and I would like to lead you in a prayer. If that's you, if you think you need to have a personal relationship with Christ, raise your hand. Don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Anyone here? For those of you who are watching us through live stream, you can raise your hand wherever you are and I would lead you into a prayer of acceptance. If you're here today, you would like to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, please pray this prayer with me. Repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, thank you for the gift of life. I confess that I'm a sinner. I believe that you died for me and you rose back to life for me. And today, I confess all my sins. Please forgive me. I accept you 
into my life. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for the eternal life that I have right now in Christ. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are now a born again believer. You are now a Christian. God already imparted into your life His love and now you have the, you have the cap capability to love and to love others. Thank you, Lord. And if you're here today, you need to break through in loving one another, forgiving one another. I'll pray for you. In the name of Jesus, release this brother release this sister I know it's difficult she went through a lot she went through a lot she was offended he was offended he was insulted she is insulted but in the name of Jesus let the spirit who is residing in him or in her help him help her to live in this life with freedom and let him or let her love this person who is so difficult to love is impossible to love but by your grace by your mercy by your power in the name of Jesus let love flow let forgiveness flow in the name of Jesus and there's freedom right now thank you Jesus it's not by might nor by power but by the Spirit of the Lord so that we will be able to make it in Jesus name Amen in the name Amen Amen Amen. I love you, church. Love the person next to you, not only your family. Love one another. See you next Sunday.